speaking with uh, Jeff Lippincott and Mark T. Williams, who are two composers that are uh, working in a genre of television that not most people are aware of the importance of score, and that's reality TV. The, the reality TV genre is the most popular genre of television when looking at ratings and viewership over seasons. Jeff and Mark have, scores, uh, have scored series like The Biggest Loser, Shark Tank, Extreme Weight Loss, MasterChef, and The Apprentice. Uh, guys, thank you so much for uh, chatting today. Hey, you're welcome. We're uh, happy to be here. Um, so, uh, tell me how you guys came to be collaborators and kind of what led you to composing and ultimately to uh, team up. How'd you guys meet? We actually met, believe it or not, on the internet. This is and Mark. This is Mark. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, there was a film music, uh, listserv and we were both members of it. And in fact, at that point we were living in Nashville and, um, we're probably the only two guys in Nashville that were aspiring to be film composers that didn't realize, hey, you should probably be in L.A. if you want to do this. <laughs> and uh, anyway, that led us to meet up for lunch, and um, we became, you know, acquaintances. And shortly thereafter, uh, I decided to move to L.A. And uh, Jeff and I kept in touch. He, he was visiting for years, uh, you know, coming back and forth. And, but he had a great career and a family in Nashville, so... He was pretty content, you know, working there and uh, working on a lot of record projects uh, for a lot of artists like, you know, Shania Twain, Faith Hill, and some pretty significant projects. Um, but he finally felt like, hey, I'm supposed to move, move to L.A., and, and he showed up, and we met up. And, uh, in fact, uh, the funny thing is he had moved here uh, in, I think, July. He dropped off his family. He flew back to Nashville um, and then over to Ireland, uh, to Dublin, to record uh, the Irish Film Orchestra uh, for, a, for a record project he was doing for Curb Records. Wow. And um, he had dropped everything back off in Nashville and, and come back uh, to L.A. And, and was sleeping, you know, exhausted from, from uh, you know, all that travel and all the work. And uh, the phone rang, and it was me calling him saying, hey, you know, I have an opportunity to uh, work on a, on a, a big project that uh, is going to require a large orchestra. Would you be interested in, in, in working together on this? And I knew Jeff had quite an experience working with uh, large orchestras and, and uh, arranging, conducting, and producing those sessions. So anyway, I said, sure, why not? Um, I, guess, uh, I guess it's going to work out with me being here in California. And um, anyway, we met up. We worked on that project. We then subsequently collaborated on a couple more and um, and just started building our friendship, realizing that, you know, we definitely had complementary skill sets that, um, you know, he had skill sets with, with like I mentioned already, in, in this live orchestral realm. And at that point, I had actually, I had, in Nashville, I, I studied at Belmont University and, um, and, and was a keyboard player playing in different bands and then also scoring. I worked for a composer in Nashville, so I had some TV experience working on some shows that have uh, New York at that point. When I moved to L.A., I got a staff um, composing position with a company called Machine Head, which is uh, in Venice. And um, I did commercials for a while. And uh, at somewhere around uh, March of 2003, we, we headed up to Mammoth, and Jeff invited me to go with his family. And I had just recently um, left my full-time position and was just, you know, freelancing at that point for Machine Head and for some other, you know, for some other projects with Composer. And um, we decided actually there in Mammoth that we would, uh, you know, I asked Jeff, I said, hey, would you be interested in teaming up, you know? I mean, two heads are better than one, right? And uh, he said, sure, why not? So we, uh, we formed off two. It was just the two of us. We had home studios at that point and we didn't really know where we were going other than we were both composers that were passionate about writing music and we wanted to work in television and film. Well, within a matter of, uh, within a matter of days, I get a call from, from uh, the guys at Machine Head saying, hey, we have this show that, uh, that is for the WB, uh, which was you know, network at that point. And it's a summer show. It's this reality show. It's called Boarding House North Shore. And we're reaching out to a bunch of different composers to submit theme ideas. And there's no budget. And 
um, all the music's being changed in the show because a new producer has taken over the series. And would you be interested uh, in submitting something? If so, we need it, you know, immediately, and there's no money. And, um, you know, what do you think? <laughs> and um, I said, well, you know what, this is this is a good opportunity. It was a Saturday, and, you know, I told my wife, I was like, well, I guess I'm, you know, I'm going to work on this, this theme idea. Who knows? And I worked on the theme, submitted it, and on uh, Monday it was played for Mark Burnett, wow. who became the producer of that show. And Mark Burnett um, liked the theme, uh, liked the theme that I did, and um, out of all the, the themes, chose that one to be the theme for the show. And subsequently asked, um, hey, can, can the composer of this theme write score for the show? I really like this direction. And... Uh, I got that call from from them, and hey, you know they're interested in you writing this this uh, you know the score is some score as well, but you know there there's no money like the budget's been spent because the score and the show had already been finished, and Mark was Mark Burnett had come on board to take the show over and and and, and kind of retool it in post. And um, I said, well, you know, here's the thing, you know, I'm out now I have a, a, a partner we partnered up and and he's a phenomenal composer and and I really you know need him on this project in order to, to deliver the amount of music you need in a short period of time and we need to do this as a team are you guys okay with that and they said you know what absolutely um, go for it and and we appreciate it and it worked for both both sides and so we ended up getting on board with that project and during that process, we were invited to uh, an uh, Eco Challenge premiere, which was the show that that Mark was, you know, had produced and was actually prior to Survivor. And we didn't work on the project, but we were invited to the premiere. And at the premiere, Mark was there, and um, and, a, and a sea of other people. And and we walked up to him, introduced ourselves, and uh, let him know, you know, uh, we appreciated working on on Boarding House. And um, 30 minutes later, he walked up to us handed us this card and said, I want to talk to you about some projects. Give me a call tomorrow. We called him, um, had a conversation about a couple of projects, one of them being The Apprentice, and we spent the next several months uh, demoing theme ideas, and uh, at the end of that, you know, we worked worked on a lot of ideas. They ended up deciding to license a song by the OJs, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which everybody knows at this point. And and we were hired on the show because of our dedication to, you know, trying to to work hard to, to get the tone and get the sound right for the theme. We were hired to actually work on the score of the show. So from there, um, Jeff and I really, you know, had a platform and, and we're in a great position because the Apprentice ratings were, were huge. And uh, at that point, subsequently, we, we started getting calls from other network television producers. Uh, in fact, J.D. Roth and Todd Nelson called us, uh, and Dave Broom and Mark Coops and Howard Owens and, and uh, Ben Silverman, and they all had, were working on a show called, you know, uh, The Biggest Loser. And um, they brought us in the office, pitched us the concept of the show, and uh, we got on board with that show, and that show became a, a huge hit. And, and uh, from there, there was just sort of a, stream of other shows that came out of that, you know, due to the relationships we were building and, and hopefully because the producers were, were happy with the music we were delivering, we'd like to think so at least. And um, we've been just, we're just really grateful for all the opportunities we've, we've had. And that's kind of the long answer to your question, but there <laughs> had to give you the full backstory for, you know, to give some context. I know. It's, it's very interesting to hear that journey and coming into it and everything. And uh, and you guys have thrived so much in this uh, in this genre and everything. And the shows that you work on are, I mean, they're huge, uh, huge hits. Um, so I mean, reality television it's it's such a kind of broad subject because each show kind of varies differently in its approach. But I guess maybe more a little bit focusing question: What is the the goal of music in a reality series? Does it differ than a structured narrative? Is it different than maybe a documentary score? Like, what what do you think is the goal of music in a, in a sh reality show? Well, you know, it depends on, this is Jeff, depends on the, it depends on the show itself, you know, like a, a docu-reality, like uh, Who Do You Think You Are, mm -hmm. the, um, 
we wrote a lot of a lot of score, melodic score to that um, show. So we wrote the original main title theme, and then we used that melody throughout the the show to kind of tie the characters, uh, the stars, where it was that they were the genealogy that they were following. Um, and that's, I don't know if you're familiar with that show. Who do you think you are? It's a it's a genealogy show. They like take Emmett Smith and they trace him back to you know like the 1800s. Oh right 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 right. Yes yes I did. Oh, that yeah. show. So it was on NBC for a couple of seasons. Now it's on TLC. But we wrote a thematic package for that for that show, which really we twist the theme around a lot in different in different genres of music, so that it would carry from character to character um, and fit the body of the show. But in a in a situation like Biggest Loser, uh, we in that situation we wrote the music before the show was shot. And there was really no melodic content, really, as a as the thematic base. It was more tonal center as the thematic base. So mm-hmm. um, we were given the you know the uh, the marching orders to to write music that was um, big. That was these people are heavy. They're trying to lose weight. It's emotional. And so we took those those notes and tried to create music that had a had a big bottom, had a, a heaviness to it, a weightiness to it. Uh, that wasn't silly, of course, but that um, would match someone that's 400 pounds getting on a scale. Right. I mean, it's, you know, you're not going to write a little piano cue for that. So, uh, so I think it varies from, from show to show and from, um, from scenario to scenario, but I think on a broad spectrum, uh, reality music is a, um, is a conduit to push the emotion and the scene to a place that maybe it's not always going. Mm-hmm. And if it is going there, to realize that place when it can finally gets there. Right. And I mean, just just trying to recall from memory of all the, the you know shows that I've watched over the years, and I, I feel like reality shows have a lot of recurring pieces, especially The Apprentice or Shark Tank. And so, and Shark Tank is kind of like a an episode of the week type show with a new you know new contestant or new person every week. Or The Apprentice or Biggest Loser has like kind of a season-long arc of the contestants and everything. So do you guys, I mean, you, you mentioned that you wrote music before the show. Do you do you ever work on a reality series episode by episode, or do you kind of write a blanket of music that can be used over and over during kind of different portions of the show, like the elimination or the meetings and stuff like that? Well, it happens both ways. I think Shark Tank's a really good example of a show that's got basically a set. I mean, there's no mystery to the show. They mm-hmm. come through the tank, they stand there, they pitch their product, they go home. So that that show has got set pieces that are in the same spot every time, you know the walkthrough, the you know the the pitch, right. you know the exit. Those are those are definitely set pieces um, that recur every time, and you want them to. You expect to hear that music when they come through the tank. Um, the Apprentice would be a little different in the fact that you do have the boardroom, you have the main title theme, but the characters are the, the characters and what they're doing is changing so much that you really can't hone in on themes particularly mm-hmm. from a lot of content that attaches to a character per se. So um, I think that that it, it depends on if the show's got those those set moments or not. And of course, like I said, in The Apprentice, it does have the boardroom, but that really is the only set sort of moment in The Apprentice. Mm-hmm. And the boardroom was actually composed oh, the by boardroom actually David Vanacore. It was an ours anyway. David Vanacore uh, composed that. Oh, okay. it was who was the other part of that show, who composes music for that show. And uh, since, and you mentioned kind of like each character, I mean, kind of treating these contestants or the stars as characters, um, do you look at them and kind of like look at their each unique stories? Do you kind of look at their uh, unique personalities and do you use that to influence your music? I think it does at times. Look, I mean, many, like I said before, and answering probably your first question, which was, you know, do you writing the music before do you ever write to picture? Yes, mm-hmm. we do write to picture. Um, but typically, we write a good portion of the music beforehand, and then as the producers or as characters start to stand out and as there's a, there's a story to be told, we'll write to that story. Um, but those things, and that's the way reality is a little different. You kind of have to wait for those things to evolve in the footage and in the, right. in the, when they're shooting it anyway, because you don't know what they're going to give you. I mean, there's no script. So we have to wait till that kind of develops before we're even able to put music to that. Yeah, that, that that would seem like a a big challenge, not having a script and just kind of uh, getting it presented. Uh, so, like, how is the the production schedule like with a reality show? Is it is it similar to broadcast television or a scripted series? Do you have like how many days do you work on per episode? Do they give it to you in a finished like final cut, or is it a 
uh, a, not an unlocked cut? You know what? There's there's really no set pattern. Um, we could get called three months before the show, before they even start shooting, and say, this is what we're doing. Start writing music for it, and we'll see if it works when the show's being cut. Um, we could get called two weeks before and say, uh-oh, we need music because what we're doing is not working, and then we're writing some music, and then we're giving them some of our catalog music. Then we're just trying to get the show on the air. Mm-hmm depends on where they're at in production schedule and how far ahead we've been hired um, to do the show. And, and again, we get called last minute and we get called six months before a show. So it's, it's, it's hard, to, uh, hard to pin down. But typically the production schedules are pretty okay for us because we have a team up here at our studio. We have a 5,000 square foot facility and we have orchestrators and mixers and, and there's Mark and I, of course. So we, we, we're, we kind of get two for one here because we're able to write you know, twice as much music yeah, being, two, being two guys. So we can write twice as fast. So, um, so that's helpful in those pinches, but typically we're not in those pinches. Uh, you know, usually producers are pretty well thought out and how this all works. Right. I mean, cause I do notice a, a lot when they're shaping up these episodes and kind of compiling that they, uh, t- uh, reality TV editors love to, to cut to the music and they love to kind of build their scenes or little sequences, you know, around uh, the score. Do the do you ever get um, do you ever communicate with the editors themselves, or do you mainly work just with the showrunners or the producers? Uh, absolutely, we definitely communicate with editors a lot, uh, and and with the producers as well. Typically, on the on the front end of the show, when we've written the music and they're cutting and they're um, there may be questions or they're trying to you know we're trying to find the sound of the show. That's when we have a, a, the most impact with the editors. Uh, typically, on the front end, very front end, when we get hired for the show and we decide what the sound of the show should should or shouldn't be. That's all EP stuff. And then when they start cutting, then we're more in dialogue. It, it, we get passed off to the editors, and we're more in dialogue with the editors at that point because kind of we're in the trenches now and just mm-hmm. trying to get the sound of the show worked out. And since they're cutting the show, they're the, you know, they're kind of figuring out uh, what cues and, and how the music should be cut in. So it, it changes as the show evolves. So kind of uh, looking at the whole spectrum of reality television as a composer, what would you say is the biggest challenge for a composer for reality TV? The biggest challenge for a composer of reality television is that you get no picture to write to. So we're writing music sometimes before the show's even shot. So it's up to us to decide what the sound of the show, with the, with the executive producers, of course, of course uh, decide what they would like the sound of the show to be and then actually produce that sound without, even, without ever watching what the show is yet because they haven't cut it yet. And, and that's obviously not what a scripted drama does and not what a film does. They're always, you know, we're always composing to footage on those shows. But this, you're, you're composing in the blind. So you decide what that picture should sound like before the picture's there. And that's a guessing game. And, you know, we get it right a lot, and sometimes we get it wrong. And you got to rewrite everything. Um, and that's a challenge, you know. Uh, typically, uh, since the beginning of picture, composers have scored the picture, but this is not the same way. You know, it's, it's, it's sort of backwards. That's, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's really crazy. So when you, if once you compose something and say you, 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 know, you, you give it to them and they send you back, you know, the first episode with your music and you, oh my God, that's not what I imagine it to be. Do you quickly try to rework it before it, it goes to air or do you wait till next season to try something different? Well, it depends, you know, they'll probably, if it's that, if it's, that awkward they'll just they'll use maybe another piece of music in that mm-hmm. spot and we'll fix it next year um and sometimes it's look we'll just send it over to us and we'll just score it you know we'll just score it directly and we'll we'll figure it out there um but because you know because technology is the way it is you know i can score something for you right now right i can have it mastered by two or three o'clock in the afternoon you can cut it into the picture and post it and make it air you know tonight if you wanted i mean just that's just technology so we've done that I mean, we've had stuff, we write, we write stuff pretty close to the, you know, if something just needed fixed or, oh, man, this just didn't work, and now what do we do? Wow. Because turnaround time is so fast now with Internet and uploading and downloading stuff. I mean, you, I could be in Alaska and do it. You know, it's not an issue. So we're able to turn around that stuff pretty quickly now, and it, it not, but we don't really run into that often. But that's fully orchestrated. We're not talking about a drum loop and a pad. Right. Yeah, and anybody can do that. I think, you know, part of... Part of that, and you didn't ask this exact question, but I'm just going to add to what Jeff said, is that the discipline of us, of us coming in and writing every day for you know a decade in this genre um, has definitely honed our skill set 
so we're able to turn around something that quickly. And I think that's why a lot of the producers who do hire us, they realize that when they come to Off2, they're, they're getting that reliable set of skills. They're getting that reliable, we're going to get the deliverables on time. We're going to get the music that we want, that we ask for. And if we're in a pinch, they're going to, they're going to bail us out. And uh, that's, that's just what we do. That's, I mean, uh, I can imagine you guys have worked in a shorthand with each other and, and you have your, your skills and set of ways and you can you know, bang, you know, knock one out really quickly. So that's pretty awesome. Um, but uh, so what, what would you say kind of to wrap up? What's the most rewarding thing of composing reality TV as a musician, as a storyteller? Uh, what do you love the most of it? Just having the massive distribution outlet of, of people hearing your music finally. I mean, you dream of this as a composer growing up when you're playing music in your, in your bedroom, like mm -hmm. I was, like Jeff was, you know, you dream of the opportunity for the rest of the world to actually hear and engage with what you write and what you create. And to be honest with you, you know, for me, that's, that's that's like the the dream come true. Just loving it, right? Here. <laughs> that's awesome. It, but it's true, man. I mean, I was 11 years old and I had this dream. I want to write music and I want to have I want to have music on TV one day. That was that was my goal, honestly. And um, and I just kind of pursued that. And and God was gracious enough to allow allow me down that path and to direct my path and um, allow allow it to come to fruition. And uh, and who better to do it with than Jeff? I mean, we're of like mind. We um, we're, we're the greatest friends. We we connect and we have an unspoken, you know, when we go to write, we just know and it works together. So he can go in his studio. I can go in my studio. We both can write. We both can go then, you know, out to lunch, talk to the guys here, hang out. And we know, like, we're on the same page without going back and forth between each other's rooms. And it's pretty, it's, it's sort of bizarre and people don't really get it. But we've worked together so long. We've worked together so closely. We've collaborated in the same room together so many times on so many themes on so many different projects that now we can do that. We have the luxury of, of just understanding each other without even talking about a project and just going in and doing it. And somehow, I don't have the answer. I, there's no formula. There's no book for it. It just works. Well, that's a great answer. That's awesome. <laughs> um, Very passionate. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> No, I, yeah, you can. I can tell the passion and everything, and that's what always that drives me. Because I'm not a musician. I'm not uh, a composer. I'm a. I went to film school. You know, I'm, I'm an aspiring filmmaker, and that's what fuels me is, is the music. So it's really, really cool to hear. So, uh, do you guys have any projects coming up? Uh, what are you guys uh, working on right now? We just have Grace Unplugged was released a couple of weeks ago in the theaters. The Lions get released. It's a it's a great little movie, little family picture. Um, we were able to go up to Seattle and record, you know, uh, a nice small orchestra for it, and um, had a great time. And we're trying to push into f films now, and, and that's kind of our first foray into a, a widely released movie. So we're we're happy about that. Um, we're also uh, working on a new ABC show called The Quest, which, uh, incidentally, we're going back to Seattle in a week and a half to record the orchestra. This is a big orchestra uh, this time, which is rare for an ABC television show, but we're excited about doing that. And um, that's with the producers of uh, The Amazing Race, Bertram Van Munster. And um, we'll also have uh, some of the Lord of the Rings people involved. And you know, there's kind of like six or seven producers on it. But uh, it's a pretty exciting show. And um, so and then, and then, of course, the regular shows. We've got Hotel Hell coming up with Gordon Ramsay and Master Chef Jr., which is on right now. Of course, Shark Tank is on right now. Biggest Loser just started up again, and uh, Apprentice will probably start up again in the spring. So... Um, Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition, and then, of course, Who Do You Think You Are is still on, I think, TLC, or maybe it just finished airing. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're having fun. You guys are keeping busy, that's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a good thing to be. But to, to wrap up, uh, my final question I always like to ask composers is if you could score any movie, or maybe in this case a TV series or a reality series, uh, with no disrespect to the original composer or score, which film or series would you choose? Magnum P.I. <laughs> so I love Mag Magnum P.I. was an inspiration for me. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to get to know my host and, and Jeff and I become friends with Mike. He's, he's such a gracious, kind uh, mentor and has really helped out so many, so many guys here in L.A. that have, that have come up. 
to the ranks. Um, you know, I, I, I would not want to actually even come. I would want to disrespect, you know, what he did on that show. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's is such a great show, and I grew up watching it all the time. So that 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 in the A team. But anyway, Jeff will give you a, a probably much, much uh, different answer, and, and he's going. <laughs> No disrespect to the composers, right? Right. No, it's like what? What you? What do you kind of? What kind of playground would you love to play in? Uh, I would have loved to have scored "The Natural" by Randy Newman, wow. and then "Spoke Prado" by Bruce Broughton. Wow, great choices. I, two iconic scores that you still hear today all over the place. Mm-hmm. Not Star Wars. They're not like you know. Look, I love John Williams. Okay, so no, I love Star Wars. One of the most iconic themes ever written, but. Still absolutely amazing themes in their own right. Captured the picture and the time that they were trying to be period correct for. And just just can't ever get them out of my head. And they're my number one and number two, probably side by side. Both written in the same year, I think, both 84, 85. Um, just great scores. And that would be me, although I probably wouldn't do as good a job as Randy or, or uh, Bruce. But. <laughs> well, that's that's. Um... Awesome answers, uh, guys. Thank you so much, uh, Jeff and Mark. Uh, it was such a great uh, honor and privilege to talk to you guys, and uh, and I, I hope uh, more more of a spotlight gets shined on on the work you guys do. And uh, uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you for the call. Thank you for thinking of us, and uh, we wish you the best in your career as a filmmaker. Absolutely.